Welcome. We have here a leaning ladder problem, which we might have seen in other videos from other sources. In those, they only have one coefficient of friction. We're going to look at it if we have a coefficient of friction both on the ground and on the wall. We're going to call anything with the wall W, anything with the ground G. What we want to find is the smallest theta for equilibrium. So the idea is that if we were to have it perfectly vertical or very close to vertical, it would be extremely stable, whereas if we have it very close to horizontal, it will quickly slide down in this way. So we've done a good sketch, and we want to get our extended free body diagram. So we draw our ladder, and we draw the forces on our object. So we have at the center gravity. We have from this wall, perpendicular to the wall is the normal force from the wall. And then the ladder is going to try to move down, so we have a friction from the wall pointing up. Down here, if this moves down, it's going to move out, so our friction is going to point from the ground this way, and our normal force from the ground is going to point this way. So as we organize, it might be nice to have a nice table of knowns and unknowns. One thing from our knowns and unknowns, we don't know theta, and we've yet to find the normal forces yet. We do know, right, if this is the smallest, that our friction from our wall is going to be this coefficient of friction times our related normal forces. So friction from the wall is going to be mu times normal wall, and friction from the ground is going to be mu times normal from the ground. For our knowns, we can take a look at where we might want our axis of rotation to be. We have two forces here. We have two forces here. In past, we did it right here, so let's continue with that. We're going to have this as our axis. And so if we have that, then our radiuses for g and g for the normal from the ground and for the friction from the ground are going to be 0. So if that's the case, then we know that our torque from the normal ground is going to be 0. Our torque from the friction ground is going to be 0. And we can take a look at some of these distances as well. So this would be the distance to the ladder is going to be L over 2. And then the distance to our wall ones are going to be L. So we have L and L over 2. Looking at just the gravity one, we have our gravity is like this, and then our angle theta is like this. So we can extend these a little bit into a right triangle. And so this is going to be 90 minus theta. And so our torque from gravity is going to be mg, the force, L over 2, the distance, and then sine of 90 minus theta. But 90 minus theta is the same, sine of 90 minus theta is the same as cosine of theta. So we can say the torque from gravity is mgl over 2 cosine of theta. And then similarly for up here, now I have this full distance L, and I have my forces. This is the force from the wall. This is the normal from the wall, friction from the wall. So if I have this angle theta here, this angle theta is going to be the same between these two. So my torque from the normal from the wall is going to be the normal from the wall times L times sine of theta. And this friction from the wall is going to be also vertical as opposed to horizontal. So it is going to be. friction from the wall L cosine theta. But now I can use that it's equal to mu. So I have the torque from the friction from the wall is going to be mu normal from the wall L cosine theta. Excellent. So also my organize, I want to write Newton's second. So I can look at my forces, some of my forces in the x. My sum of the forces in the x is that I have right here a force of 
from the friction from ground pointing forward, normal from the wall pointing in the opposite direction. So I have friction ground minus normal from the wall. And I know it's equilibrium, so I know it's equal to zero. So now I can say that I know that the friction from the ground is equal to the normal from the wall. Or that I can say, right, that mu, the normal from the ground, is equal to the normal from the wall. So my normal from the ground is equal to normal from the wall divided by mu. And so then I can also then say my friction from the ground is mu normal from the ground divided, or sorry, mu normal from the wall. Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's the same thing that we just had right here. So my Newton second, I can also write the sum of the forces in the y. I have friction from the wall pointing up. I have normal from the ground pointing up. And I have gravity pointing down. And I know that my sum of my forces has to be 0 here. We'll get back to this. But then also in my solve step, also as I'm doing, I want second law for torques, which is that my sum of my torques. So I have five torques, but I know two of them are 0. And I've written the other three down, because I did my organized step. And I can see which directions they're in. As this is pulling, the mg wants to pull this in this direction, in a clockwise or negative direction, whereas normal wall and friction wall want to pull it in a positive direction or a counterclockwise direction. So I have the normal from the wall minus, plus the friction from the wall, minus mg all of these being the torques, equals 0. So my torque from the normal from the wall is normal from the wall, L sine theta. My friction from the wall is mu normal from the wall, L cosine theta. And then I have minus my torque from gravity is mg L cosine theta over 2 equals 0. So here I can cancel out L's, and then I can move this over to this side and group my normal from the wall. If I do that, then I have my normal from the wall times sine theta plus mu cosine theta. And this is equal to mg cosine theta over 2. So now I know that my normal from my wall is mg cosine theta over 2 sine theta plus mu cosine theta. So if that's the case then, now I have the normal from the wall, I can plug them all into this equation. and plug in all that I've learned. So I know that the force of the wall is mu times the normal from the wall. So I have mu times all of this, mg cosine theta over 2 sine theta plus mu cosine theta. I have my normal from gravity, which I know is my normal from the wall divided by mu. So I have plus mg cosine theta over 2 mu sine theta plus mu cosine theta. And then I have minus mg equals 0. So I can move this mg over, and then I can factor mg cosine theta over 2 sine theta plus mu cosine theta out. So I have mg on this side, and then I have my nw, mg cosine theta, over 2 sine theta plus mu cosine theta. And then I just have 
mu plus 1 over mu, equaling my mg. So now I can do a little bit more canceling. Now this is just 1. And I can bring this over. So now I can talk about cosine of theta over all of this. So then I can multiply everything by, sorry. So I have cosine of theta over 2. And I have this mu plus 1 over mu, which is now just a number. And this is equal to sine theta plus mu cosine theta. So I can bring my cosine thetas over and rearrange. And what I get is I get 1 over 2 mu minus mu over 2 is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, which is equal to tangent of theta. Plugging this in, my theta becomes 0 0.897 radians, or then my theta is roughly 51.42 degrees. So a little bit weirder, a little bit more complicated than the single friction case, but just showing that we can still go all the way through it as we need.